Hey guys, Jeremy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Xfinity game service brought to us by Comcast and Electronic Arts. This is a new service, it's in beta right now, and it's available to all Xfinity customers that has the X1 cable box. X1 cable box is basically Comcast's high-end fancy cable box. It's connected to the internet, it allows us to access certain apps like weather and traffic, it has a pretty spiffy UI, and it's generally more pleasant to look at than the typical cable box that just gives you some really dull gray and blue menus. If you had Comcast service, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So basically what this service does, it allows us to stream a handful of games from the X1 cable box directly to our televisions and we use our phones or tablets as the game controller. It's not new technology, it's really just game streaming. We've seen this in a variety of forms before, most recently with PlayStation Now, but it's also been around in a variety of other forms in the past. But this is the first time that a big major cable operator has incorporated it into their typical box. So right now, the Xfinity Games does not cost anything. It's still in beta. If you want to sign up, you have to go to a special website. Let them know that you want to be a part of it. And then when your cable box resets itself every night or so, just go back, check the apps menu, and then you may see the Xfinity Games logo on there. Then you can click on it, then you can get started. So without further ado, let's take a look at this thing and see how it works. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the apps menu on your Xfinity X1 cable box and scroll over to the games option. When you click on that, you'll be greeted with a screen that's similar to what you're seeing here and it's going to invite you to try out the free beta. Click on that and you're going to get the special code that you're going to have to enter into a website that you have to use on your phone. If you're using an iOS device like an iPhone, you're going to have to use Safari because for one reason or another at the recording time of this video, it does not work in Google Chrome's web browser. Then after you input that special code, it will automatically recognize that you have put it in, take you to a special login screen, you log in with your email account, then you will see a list of games that are currently available for you to stream. One of the first games I tried playing was Real Racing 2, and at the time when it was released, it was one of the best looking games on mobile platforms. And it still looks pretty good streaming on the X1 cable box. Now it doesn't look brilliant, sometimes there can be a little bit of pixelation here and there as the stream attempts to keep up with itself, and of course this is going to be different depending on what your internet speed is. But all in all, I thought it looked really good, and frankly I was a little bit bit impressed looking at it on a 50 inch screen and I thought it was very passable. Now the problem that I had with this was the controls. At the time of this video there was no way to use some virtual controls with this game. It only had tilt controls and it made it very awkward because due to the latency, sometimes when I would tilt my phone one way or another, it'll take a split second to register on the screen. And that just sort of made my mind have to compensate for the delay that was occurring over the internet. But that wasn't the biggest problem. The biggest problem that I had with it was the phone would always revert back into portrait mode if I tilted it too far to the left or too far to the right and whenever the phone exited landscape mode the game would automatically pause each and every time and would only resume once it recognized that the phone was back in landscape mode this was really really annoying the only way to control the car's direction was to tilt the phone and if you tilted it too much the game would pause that was a really big bummer but when that wasn't an issue, which was very rarely, I still kind of enjoyed it. I would still rather prefer to play it on a phone or a tablet, but it was a pretty decent first showing, especially being streamed over a cable box. Another game I tried out was World of Goo. I remember from a few years back was a very popular mobile game and it was pretty much touchscreens. It was more of a two finger operation to get the blobs to line up correctly so that you can get them to the pipe, but it still worked pretty well. Latency really wasn't an issue with this game. Although the biggest problem that I have with the Xfinity games platform is the lack of an actual app since you'll be doing everything through the web browser. but the response time between me tapping the screen and things appearing on my television screen was very minimal. And with games such as this word game that doesn't require a lot of 
switch controls or doesn't require anything to happen within split second response times, it works pretty well. Though occasionally you will get the network error if you try to play a game or two. Now for some games that do require a little bit more finesse like NBA Jam on Fire Edition, this is the type of thing that could really suffer if latency is a huge issue. But once again, it really wasn't that big of a deal for me. The biggest problem were the controls. They tell you on the screen how to pass the ball, how to steal the ball, and how to shoot, but honestly, I never really quite understood how to shoot. Uh, they said you had to hold up and then tap on the screen, but every time I would hold up, my player would just run up the court. So I'm not too sure exactly what they meant about that. But as you can see here, the game ran fine. It was buttery smooth, and most of the cool things I did, like this alley hoop dunk, really just happened because I got lucky. So, you know, all in all, the Xfinity TV games application brought to us by EA is functional. This isn't really something I can see myself doing because it does still consume internet data usage and Comcast does cap your data usage in some states like they do here in Georgia. So I really can't see myself experiencing this too much because I would rather just download these kind of games on my phone or tablet and not have to worry about it constantly draining my data. But for some people who maybe have kids, this may be some way to keep them quiet and give them something to do to entertain them. But then again, since you do need a smartphone or a tablet to control this in the first place and an internet connection, you might as well just download the game yourself and just play it on a tablet or a phone. You don't need to take over your TV in order to do this, but maybe this is just the first showing for something bigger to come. Maybe this is just something that's more of a test bed. If that is the truth, and if something bigger is coming down the timeline, hopefully they'll take what they learned from here and apply it to something better in the future. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And until next time, I'm Jeremy, and I will talk to you later.